It is also known for cats to merely become bored with their given food and decide to stop eating until they are tempted into eating again. Although it is extremely rare for a cat to deliberately starve itself to the point of injury, the sudden loss of weight can cause a fatal condition called hepatic lipidosis, a liver dysfunction which causes pathological loss of appetite and reinforces the starvation, which can lead to death within as little as 48 hours. Additionally, cats have been known to develop a fondness for prepared human foods, normally preparations which are rich in proteins or fats. However, a diet consisting only of human food, even if high-quality meat, is unlikely to contain the balanced nutrition required by the cat. Cats normally are good self-regulators of diet. However, unlimited access to food or excessive human food treats will often lead to the cat becoming obese, particularly if it is older or more sedentary. This may lead to several health complications, such as diabetes, especially in neutered males. Such health conditions can be prevented through diet and exercise, playing, especially for cats living exclusively indoors. Cats can also develop pica. Pica is a condition in which animals chew or eat unusual things such as fabric, plastic, or wool. In cats, this is mostly harmless as they do not digest most of it but can be fatal or require surgical removal if a large amount of foreign material is ingested, for example, an entire sock. It tends to occur more often in Siamese, Burmese, and breeds with these in their ancestry. 3.2.2 Toxic Sensitivity The liver of a cat is less effective at detoxification than those of other animals, including humans and dogs, Therefore, exposure to many common substances considered safe for households may be dangerous to them. In general, the cat's environment should be examined for the presence of such toxins and the problem corrected or alleviated as much as possible. In addition, where sudden or prolonged serious illness without obvious cause is observed, the possibility of toxicity must be considered and the veterinarian informed of any such substances to which the cat may have had access. For example, the common painkiller, paracetamol or acetaminophen, sold under brand names such as Tylenol and Panadol, is extremely toxic to cats because they naturally lack enzymes needed to digest it. Even minute portions of doses safe for humans can be fatal and any suspected ingestion warrants immediate veterinary attention. Even aspirin, which is sometimes used to treat arthritis in cats, is much more toxic to them than to humans and must be administered cautiously. Similarly, applications of minoxidil, Rogaine, to the skin of cats, either accidental or by well-meaning owners attempting to counter loss of fur, has sometimes proved fatal. In addition to such obvious dangers as insecticides and weed killers, other common household substances that should be used with caution in areas where cats may be exposed to them include mothballs and other naphthalene products, as well as phenol-based products often used for cleaning and disinfecting near cats' feeding areas or litter boxes, such as pine sol, detol, lysol, hexachlorophene, etc., which, although they are widely used without problem, have been sometimes seen to be fatal. Antifreeze is particularly appealing to cats, and as little as a teaspoonful can be fatal. Many human foods are somewhat toxic to cats. Theobromine in chocolate can cause theobromine poisoning, for instance, although few cats will eat chocolate. Toxicity in cats, ingesting relatively large amounts of onions or garlic, has also been reported. Even such seemingly safe items as cat food packaged in pull-tab tin cans have been statistically linked to hyperthyroidism. Although the connection is far from proved, suspicion has fallen on the use of bisphenol A, another phenol-based product as discussed above, to seal such cans. As is well known, many houseplants are at least somewhat toxic to many species, cats included, and the consumption of such plants by cats is to be avoided. 3.3. Habitat. The wild cat, ancestor of the domestic cat, is believed to have evolved in a desert climate, as evident in the behavior common to both the domestic and wild forms. 
Wildcats are native to all continents other than Australia and Antarctica, although feral cats have become apex predators in the Australian outback where they are menaces to wildlife. Citation needed. Their feces are usually dry and cats prefer to bury them in sandy places. Urine is highly concentrated, which allows the cat to retain as much fluid as possible. They are also able to remain motionless for long periods especially when observing prey and preparing to pounce. In North Africa, there are still small wildcats that are probably related closely to the ancestors of today's domesticated breeds. Cats enjoy heat and solar exposure, often sleeping in a sunny area during the heat of the day. Cats prefer warmer temperatures than humans do. People start to feel uncomfortable when their skin's temperature gets higher than about 44.5 degrees Celsius, 112 degrees Fahrenheit, but cats don't start to show signs of discomfort until their skin reaches about 52 degrees centigrade, 126 degrees Fahrenheit. Being closely related to desert animals, cats can easily withstand the heat and cold of a temperate climate, but not for extended periods. Although certain breeds, such as the Norwegian forest cat and Maine Coon, have developed heavier coats of fur than other cats, they have little resistance against moist cold, e.g. fog, rain, and snow, and struggle to maintain their 39 degrees centigrade, 102 degrees Fahrenheit, body temperature when wet. Most cats dislike immersion in water. One major exception is the Turkish Van breed, which has an unusual fondness for water. Abyssinians are also reported to be more tolerant of water than most cats. 3.4. Life History 3.4.1. Reproduction An image captioned four kittens being nursed is provided here. Cats are seasonally polyesterous, which means they may have many periods of heat over the course of a year. A heat period lasts about four to seven days if the female is bred. If she is not, the heat period lasts longer. The male cat's penis has spines which point backwards. Upon withdrawal of the penis, the spines rake the walls of the female's vagina, which may cause ovulation. Because this does not always occur, females are rarely impregnated by the first male with which they mate. Furthermore, cats are super fecund. That is, a female may mate with more than one male when she is in heat, meaning different kittens in a litter may have different fathers. The reproduction process is usually very noisy, as both cats vocalize loudly. The sound of cats mating is markedly similar to those of fighting. The gestation period for cats is approximately 63 to 65 days. The size of a litter averages 3 to 5 kittens with the first litter usually smaller than subsequent litters. Kittens are weaned between six and seven weeks, and cats normally reach sexual maturity at four to ten months, females, and five to seven months, males. Cats are ready to go to new homes at about 12 weeks old, the recommended minimum age by Federación Internacional Feline, or when they are ready to leave their mother. Cats can be surgically sterilized, spayed or neutered, as early as six to eight weeks to limit unwanted reproduction. This surgery also prevents undesirable sex-related behavior, such as territory marking, spraying urine, in males, and yowling, calling, in females. If an animal is neutered after such behavior has been learned, however, it may persist. 3.4.2. Genetics. An image captioned, blue-eyed cats with white fur have a higher incidence of genetic deafness, is provided here. The domestic cat and its closest wild ancestor both possess 38 chromosomes, in which over 200 heritable genetic defects have been identified, many homologous to human inborn errors. Specific metabolic defects have been identified underlying many of these feline diseases, there are several genes responsible for the hair color identified. The combination of them gives different phenotypes. See cat coat genetics. Features like hair length, 
lack of tail, or presence of a very short tail, bobtail cat, are also determined by single alleles and modified by polygenes. The Cat Genome Project, sponsored by the Laboratory of Genomic Diversity at the U.S. National Cancer Institute Frederick Cancer Research and Development Center in Frederick, Maryland, focuses on the development of the cat as an animal model for human hereditary disease, infectious disease, genome evolution, comparative research initiatives within the family Felidae, and forensic potential. It is a common misconception that all white cats with blue eyes are deaf, leading to some people rejecting blue-eyed white cats as pets. This is not true, as there are many blue-eyed cats with perfect hearing. However, white cats with blue eyes do have slightly higher incidences of genetic deafness than white cats of other eye colors. Section 4. Etymology and Taxonomic History 4.1. Scientific Classification The domestic cat was named Felis catus by Carolus Linnaeus in his Systema Natura of 1758. Johann Christian Daniel von Schrieber named the wild cat Felis sylvestris in 1775. The domestic cat was considered a subspecies of the wild cat by the strict rule of priority of the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. The name for the species thus ought to be Felis catus since Linnaeus published first, and so almost all biologists use Felis sylvestris for the wild species, using Felis catus only for the domesticated form. In Opinion 2027, published in Volume 60, Part 1 of the Bulletin of Zoological Nomenclature, March 31, 2003, the International Commission on Zoological Nomenclature, quote, conserved the usage of 17 specific names based on wild species which are predated by or contemporary with those based on domestic forms, end quote, thus confirming Felis sylvestris for the wildcat and Felis sylvestris catus for its domesticated cousin. Felis catus is still valid if the domestic form is considered a separate species. Recent DNA and comparative bone research shows that the separate species name Felis catus is correct after all. The results show little relation to the Felis sylvestris group, with Felis catus being derived from Felis libica 7,000 years ago when the very first small felines were domesticated in Asia Minor. The following paragraph contains pronunciations to the best of our ability. Johann Christian Polycarp Erxleben named the domestic cat Felis domesticus in his Angsfansgrude de Naturlehe and Systema Reini Animalis of 1777. This name and its variants, Felis catus domesticus and Felis sylvestris domesticus, are often seen, but they are not valid scientific names under the rules of the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. 4.2. Nomenclature. A group of cats is referred to as a clouder, a male cat is called a tom, or a gib if neutered, and a female is called a queen. The male progenitor of a cat, especially a pedigreed cat, is its sire, and its female progenitor is its dam. An immature cat is called a kitten, which is also an alternative name for young rats, rabbits, hedgehogs, beavers, squirrels, and skunks. In medieval Britain, the word kitten was interchangeable with the word catling. A cat whose ancestry is formally registered is called a pedigreed cat, purebred cat, or a show cat, although not all show cats are pedigreed or purebred. In strict terms, a purebred cat is one whose ancestry contains only individuals of the same breed. A pedigreed cat is one whose ancestry is recorded, but may have ancestors of different breeds. Almost exclusively new breeds, cat registries are very strict about which breeds can be mated together. Cats of unrecorded mixed ancestry are referred to as domestic long hairs and domestic short hairs, or commonly as random bred, moggies, 
mongrels, mutt cats, or alley cats. The ratio of pedigreed, purebred cats to random bred cats varies from country to country. However, generally speaking, purebreds are less than 10% of the total feline population. The following paragraph contains words pronounced to the best of our ability. The word cat derives from Old English cat, which belongs to a group of related words in European languages, including Welsh cath, Spanish gato, Basque catu, Byzantine Greek kata, Old Irish cat, German katze, and Old Church Slavonic katka. The ultimate source of all these terms is unknown. However, it may be linked to the ancient Nubian cadis and the Berber cadiska. The following paragraph contains words pronounced to the best of our ability. The term puss, as in pussycat or puss in boots, may come from Dutch, from pus, a female cat, or the diminutive pusji, an endearing term for any cat, or from other Germanic languages. Section 5. Importance to Humans Because of their small size, domestic cats pose almost no danger to humans. The main hazard is the possibility of infection, e.g., cat scratch disease, or rarely, rabies, from a cat bite or scratch. Cats can also potentially inflict severe scratches or puncture an eye, though this is quite rare. Dogs have been known to be blinded by cats in fights in which the cat specifically targeted the eyes of the larger animal with some accuracy. Cats can be destructive to ecosystems in which they are not native and whose species have not had time to adapt to their introduction. In some cases, cats have contributed to or caused extinctions. For example, see the case of the Stevens Island Wren. 5.1. Cats as Pets In captivity, indoor cats typically live 14 to 20 years, although the oldest known cat lived to age 36. Domestic cats tend to live longer if they are not permitted to go outdoors, reducing the risk of injury from fights or accidents and exposure to diseases, and if they are spayed or neutered. Some such benefits are neutered male cats cannot develop testicular cancer, spayed female cats cannot develop ovarian cancer, and both have a reduced risk of mammary cancer. 5.1.1 Hygiene An image captioned, A Tabby Cat Grooming Itself, is provided here. Cats are known for their fastidious cleanliness. They groom themselves by licking their fur, employing their hooked papillae and saliva. Their saliva is a powerful cleaning agent, but it can provoke allergic reactions in humans. Some people who are allergic to cats, typically manifested by hay fever, asthma, or a skin rash, quickly acclimate themselves to a particular animal and live comfortably in the same house with it, while retaining an allergy to cats in general. Many cats also enjoy grooming humans or other cats. Sometimes the act of grooming another cat is initiated as an assertion of superior position in the pecking order of a group, dominance grooming. Some cats occasionally regurgitate hairballs of fur that have collected in their stomachs as a result of their grooming. Long hair cats are more prone to this than short hairs. Hairballs can be prevented with certain cat foods and remedies that ease elimination of the hair and regular grooming of the coat with a comb or stiff brush. Cats expend nearly as much fluid grooming as they do urinating. Indoor cats are usually provided with a litter box containing litter, typically bentonite, but sometimes other absorbent material such as shredded paper or wood chips, or sometimes sand or similar material. This arrangement serves the same purpose as a toilet for humans. It should be cleaned daily and changed often, depending on the number of cats in a household and the type of litter, 
If it is not kept clean, a cat may be fastidious enough to find other locations in the house for urination or defecation. This may also happen for other reasons. For instance, if a cat becomes constipated and defecation is uncomfortable, it may associate the discomfort with the litter box and avoid it in favor of another location. A litter box is recommended for indoor-outdoor cats as well. Daily attention to the litter box also serves as a monitor of the cat's health. Numerous variations on litter and litter box design exist, including some which automatically sift the litter after each use. Bentonite or clumping litter is a variation which absorbs urine into clumps, which can be sifted out along with feces, and thus stays cleaner longer with regular sifting, but has sometimes been reported to cause health problems in some cats. Litter boxes may pose a risk of toxoplasmosis transmission to susceptible pregnant women and immunocompromised individuals, although this risk is generally decreased in indoor-only cats which would not normally be exposed to the disease. Transmission risk may be reduced by daily litter box cleaning by someone other than the susceptible individual. An image captioned, Toilet Trained Cat, is provided here. Some cats can be toilet trained eliminating the litter box and its attendant expense and smell. Training involves two or three weeks of incremental moves, such as moving and elevating the litter box until it is near the toilet. For a short time, an adapter, such as a bowl or small box, may be used to suspend the litter above the toilet bowl. Numerous kits and other aids are marketed to help toilet train cats. When training is complete, the cat uses the toilet by perching over the bowl, Occasional accidental dunkings, which can traumatize the cat to the point of its avoidance of the toilet, can lead to urinating and defecating in undesirable locations around the house. This can be avoided by use of a simple insert of one or two crossbars or a widely spaced grid to prevent falling in but allow feces to pass. Such safety devices have recently become commercially available. Otherwise, if a cat is not trained to use the toilet, it is wise to keep the lid shut to prevent thirsty or curious cats from falling in. 5.1.2 Scratching An image captioned Cat Scratching Wooden Post is provided here. Cats are naturally driven to periodically hook their front claws into suitable surfaces and pull backwards in order to clean the claws and remove the worn outer sheath as well as exercise and stretch their muscles. This scratching behavior seems enjoyable to the cat, and even declawed cats will go through elaborate scratching routines with every evidence of great satisfaction, despite the total lack of results. Indoor cats benefit from being provided with a scratching post so that they are less likely to use carpet or furniture which they can easily ruin. Commercial scratching posts typically are covered in carpeting or upholstery, but some authorities advise against this practice as not making it clear to the cat which surfaces are permissible and which are not. They suggest using a plain wooden surface or reversing the carpeting on the post so that the rougher texture of the carpet backing is a more attractive alternative to the cat than the floor covering. Some indoor cats, however, especially those that were taken as kittens from feral colonies, may not understand the concept of a scratching post, and as a result, will ignore it. Although scratching can serve cats to keep their claws from growing excessively long, their nails can be trimmed, if necessary, with a small nail trimmer designed for humans. A small pair of electrician's diagonal cutting pliers, or a guillotine-type cutter specifically designed for animal nail trimming. Care must always be taken to avoid cutting the quick of the claw, analogous to cutting into the tip of a finger and equally painful and bloody. The position of the quick can easily be seen through the translucent nail of a cat with light-colored claws, but not in cats with dark-colored nails, who therefore require careful trimming of only small amounts from the nails. An image captioned, Close-up of a cat's claw with the quick clearly visible, is provided here. 5.1.2.1 Declawing A link to main article on achectomy is provided here. Declawing is a major surgery known as anachectomy, 
performed under anesthesia, which removes the tip of each digit from the first knuckle out of the cat's forepaws and rarely the hind paws. The primary reason for declawing cats is to prevent them from damaging furniture. In the United States, some landlords may require that tenants' cats be declawed. Rarely, vicious cats, cats that frequently fight with other pets, or cats that are too efficient at predation of songbirds, etc., are declawed. The procedure is illegal in many countries worldwide. An alternative to declawing is the application of blunt vinyl nail caps that are affixed to the claws with non-toxic glue, requiring periodic replacement when the cat sheds its claw sheaths, about every four to six weeks. However, the cat will still experience difficulties because the capped nails are not as effective as claws.